What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Weekly Relapse Podcast. I am Brett Raybould, Hollywood's heartthrob, and here's the show. There you go. You nailed it that time. <laughs> Work is out. You are listening to the Weekly Relapse with your host, Skylar Potter. Potter. The day is done. What's going on, guys? Man. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Weekly Relapse. I am your host, Skylar Potter. You're here with Brett Rabel. Yeah, I already said it once. I, was, I, said, <laughs> I technically said Hollywood heartthrob. <laughs> I was trying not to cough when I went to say your name. I was like, oh, don't cough super loud into I, the mic. I saw you and I was like, did you already forget the name? <laughs> no, no, I had it. I had it. I had it. Uh, this is your second time on the podcast, and, man. Hey, it's good to be back. Dude, this it's is awesome. It's good to be back. And you're from New York City? I'm from Kansas life-wise, but okay. comedy-wise, yeah, New York City. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, before we get started too much, um, I want you to explain your t-shirts, what they look like, and where people can pick them up at, because oh. I'm blown away by them. I want one so bad. Oh, dude, that's really nice. You said. Let's get the plug. Let's get the ad let's plugs plug in. them out of the way. Plug Ad-a- them. <laughs> you, know, you know my main sponsor is Depends. Go to Depends.com. Yeah, I'm wearing a pair right now. Yeah, yeah. I got Skylar's Sponsor name. named Potter. Get you a discount on that. <laughs> uh, the shirts, okay, so it's for my sketch group called the Rabled Brothers, which is me and my brother Jordan. We are the Rabled Brothers. They are creative as hell with that name. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what's our last name? All right, brothers. Uh, oh, do we, have, we share blood? I got an idea. Done. Got an idea. Well, yeah, well, originally we had a buddy in the group, and he named us the Rabled Brothers, and it was us three. And it was his idea to name us three brothers because it made him laugh because he's like, I'm not a brother. <laughs> so there was something to it beyond. Just... You got to love the sincerity of that. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. The, ah, that's hilarious because it's like they don't know. It's you know like I mean? hilarious to exclude me. And we're like, sure, man, if you don't care. It's like that episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia where they get the cop car. Uh-huh. And then they like uh, Frank and Dennis have cop suits. And then Charlie, they're like, you can go undercover. And they make him just dress normal. And he's like, that guy had no clue I was a cop. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that is uh, funny. Yeah. So in the shirt, Rabel Brothers, it is basically the Mario Brothers, but my brother and me. So it looks like Mario and Luigi, but there's no mustaches. The eye colors match our eye colors. Not that anyone knows the original eye color of Mario or Luigi. Right. But yeah, and it's got the Rabel Brothers. Someone like out Mario there does. Font. Someone, Some, someone out there, like, dude, there's someone people. out there knows Mario's dick size, for the record. I've learned this about people. Yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> I've learned this about people because I started playing. I was telling you, I started playing Magic recently. Yeah, the card. Um, game. People fucking know shit. Like, <laughs> they know so much stuff, dude. Like, you ask them a stupid question, like, hey, I was, I was wondering, is there any card like this? They're like, well, there's actually nine of them. There's this one that's this much. It costs this much to play. It's this yeah. name. It came in this pack. It's actually this type, so you can't play it in this game. You're like, dude, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up. I need one under four dollars. Everything you just said <laughs> makes it sound like you're, that's going to be really expensive. Well, I feel like that's people. I've you know you meet people like that, and they know the most random. And you're like, what a waste of your rain man yeah. in this. Yeah, they don't cook. Like, they, everything they cook is in a microwave, but yeah. they, they can, bam. One of my buddies, he Your knows, rain man in this, that needs to be a real thing. Well, it, but it's what, like, instead of using your rain man abilities for, like, trying to develop a, it's just like, oh, I know every fourth actor that starred in any Martin Scorsese movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're like, okay, Char- well, what is that? Charlie supposed? McMullen is a comic. Uh-huh. Uh, he, uh. What is it? The the th- four four ways to David S- Kevin Spacey or some shit like that. Six degrees from Kevin Bacon. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, four ways to Kevin Bacon. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it sounds like a he, shitty. I've Netflix only song. I've only heard one person bring it up, and it was him. And I tried every person I could think of that I knew had been in a film, and he was nailing it. And it was like one of those things. It's like that kid I was telling you before we got on the air. I was like. I might be fi- high functioning autistic. Whenever he was doing that, I was like, "Dog, you're high functioning autistic." So he was saying, "Oh, he was able to relate everything." Anybody, to even Mo Alexander, which is wow. the comic that we were hanging out with. He was you know able what I mean? to relate to Kevin Bacon. Yeah, he was able to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it may have been some leaps and bounds, but I mean, he was able to do it. Whoever thought of that incredible work? That like that 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 idea of six degrees from Kevin Bacon. That's been in the pop culture lexicon for like twenty years. Yeah, someone just like at 
not filming a podcast because it's 20 years ago. But someone just thought of that on their sofa. They told someone, and they were like, that's fucking genius. Yeah, what? yeah. And then they, they somehow got on Howard Stern or it something. Just spread, it spread somehow. It's one of those things. We don't know how it spread, but it did. It's like, like wildfire. Yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of wildfires, I saw this crazy video from California. That's so nuts, dude. Have you seen all the videos of that place on fire? No, it's... Uh, I, it just I looks mean, I mean if okay I don't know if you play a lot of video games but just imagine like what a hell level would look like in like an RPG mm-hmm. that's it dude it, like, yeah. it looks like a scene out of like Lord of the Rings oh my god it's brutal it's that much is it is it homes or is it uh yeah some homes uh people are driving through it and oh, stuff like Jesus. that yeah it's it is pretty insane yeah like it the hills like it looks like there's like just mountains of fire oh my god intense it's like one of those things i've never seen the ocean but i've definitely never seen a mountain on fire (laughs) jesus yeah i I don't know if i want to see footage of death and despair (laughs) i won't look it up (laughs) no do it no 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 i want to see give me the good stuff i want to see kids burning okay oh ooh. i gotta let me go to my incognito wow i said kids burning and you're like dude i got you man (laughs) yeah let me let me pull up my old like i have to get my old computer out of my like lock safe box in the back (laughs) That's what's crazy, dude. You don't need to go incognito on it because this is a news story. This isn't like we're looking up anything. We this is like a generic. I don't actually want to see footage of kids burning. I feel like people understood that we were just joking. About I would that. hope. <laughs> I don't want to get tweeted at, but if you do tweet at me, follow at Rabel. Second plug. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely follow him, man. Um, no, but um, yeah. I mean, I feel like California wildfires are just always happening. That's just how I feel. It's, it's just like, always even been in the winter, a thing. There's just wildfires. Yeah, I mean it's. My mom, my mom is one of those people. Oh, my internet is Hilarious. terrible. We have to watch an ad before we watch people yeah. burn. Yeah, dude, everyone's got to make theirs, bro. Like you ISIS, kidding me? ISIS videos had like Bud Light. They do. They have sponsors the now. Front. Yeah, they, they're like we. They're, uh, this program is brought to you by them. That does not reflect the views and opinions of the network behind them. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. This is uh, this beheading is brought to you by Allstate. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? <laughs> and no, because your head's getting chopped off. Damn, dude! Like I, that's that's the that's the successful thing right there, man. Like, could you imagine how much can commercials pay for like Samuel L. Jackson to be a movie star, or <laughs> Matthew McConaughey? And like, I'm pretty sure those I Lincoln know. commercials, they don't even give them a script. They're like, go sit in that car and say whatever weird shit you want, and then we'll edit footage around you. All right, the dragon. Out Look here. at this bull. His name is Cyrus. <laughs> Good McConaughey. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad, right? Not bad off the cuff. Uh, right. Honestly, my McConaughey comes from uh, Tropic Thunder. You uh, m- 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 make me happy. That's like that's <laughs> like the. It got worse there. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's the <laughs> one thing I can remember McConaughey. I don't know. I've never watched. What's that one where he's like? It's the one they quote all the time. True his detective. breakout. His breakout role. Dazed and confused. Yeah, yeah. I've maybe seen it once, so I don't yeah. know any of his lines. Yeah. The one. For sure, movie that I know I've watched multiple times that happens to have Matthew McConaughey in it is Tropic Thunder. Oh, I know. To go back, I know what they pay actor like famous actors for for commercials for ads. I ha- I so one of my friends, uh, he works in like the marketing department at like Chase Bank. Oh wow! One of the one of the like big banks. Yeah, and, and you're not gonna say the real one. You don't want to get him in trouble. I don't. I would have said that we were on. He won't get in trouble. But you also we're like we're not. The, we're not that kind of friend. Like I just we're, we're Facebook friends. I just know he works at a bank. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even remember. But I know talking to him, it's to. I mean, it's like a friend of a friend. But yeah. that's not really important to the story. <laughs> but now that I've included, what other unnecessary details can I have in the story? So he was, wearing love- a, he was wearing a red shirt, and um, his mom's name is Linda. Okay, so <laughs> just throwing, just like, dude, when you said red shirt, I got really into the story. <laughs> I was like, I thought, it, I totally thought that was gonna be oh, part of it. Man. I was like, this Damn. guy, this guy can craft a narrative. Yeah. He's got the so clothes. he's got a red shirt, a nice mother. He works for Chase Bank. No, mother's a bitch. Okay, oh, so, so okay, uh, <laughs> glad we settled that. No, but it, so they had – this is before the fallout. Obvi- obviously, Kevin Spacey did their voiceovers for okay. their ads. Just 15-second spots, voiceovers. So he's not even on the screen. And Kevin Spacey lives in New York, and he saw what Kevin Spacey got. Kevin Spacey came in. took about 90 minutes to do it all, and Kevin Spacey got $4.5 million. Jesus fucking Christ. For Are you kidding me? 90 minutes of work. I totally thought you were going to say like 100000 and I was going to be upset. No. Four, four and a half million dollars. And 90 seconds of work. Kevin Spacey lives in New York, so he probably just took a cab, 20-minute cab. Made really, four million dollars. But he, I was thinking about, you know what it is, is it's not, uh, yeah, his voice, I mean, 
forget now that we know he touched kids. Yeah. But his voice is – yeah, it's an iconic voice, but it doesn't really matter – that you hear, Kevin. Maybe it makes you tune into an ad a little more because you're like, "Oh, that's." Uh, but it's you know what it, it is? does work. It, the, like that idea of that does work. It M- does work whether it's Kevin Spacey or like it worked for me whenever I heard uh, the Danny McBride do a commercial. Mm-hmm. It does make you pro- and when you're like sitting with friends watching TV, you might just go like, if you see an ad, you're like, "Oh, that's that guy from that thing." Kevin Spacey's more famous than being called that guy from that thing. Yeah, yeah, you're like, "That's fucking it's like Kevin Spacey." Hard bro. to talk. It not. It's different to talk about. It. But anyway, so um, <laughs> uh, it would be weird if they got him after the fallout, and they're you're like four and a half million. Like you could get him for way cheaper now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should have waited. And then like we want you to do a voiceover, but you need to be like in a character. Can you do, like a southern character? We, you know, need, we need you to not sound like you. Is you know what? Way? Yeah. <laughs> you know what would have been great? You so, you know uh, Subway Jared. Oh yeah, yeah. After that shit. After so Subway's like, all right, we got rid of Jared. We got to get another celebrity in there, and then they got Kevin Spacey. Oh, and then two years later, dude, he's be... also another pedophile. That you released. know how golden that would be, like, is for for us for comics. Yeah. Oh, oh my just, god. It would just be. It would just make me laugh so much if Subway had bad luck that they kept getting. Just pedophiles. But yeah, that'd be so hilarious. That they didn't know at the time. They're like, we need to vet these people way more because this is bad. Did you know Tom Segura? Did you, have you heard that he was? He, I've seen. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, whole thing. Funny, yeah. That I I love the fact that they wanted to like they're like, dude, we have to have somebody that we're not selling our our shitty subs. Yeah. yeah like right. we're only selling healthy shit right now. Right. They're cheaper. Someone promote that meatball. You know what I mean? I thought that was awesome. Shitty looking Tom Segura. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, he couldn't do it nowadays. He wouldn't. He wouldn't cast the role. He looks like after that weight loss competition. He looks good. Looks great. The um, but I was thinking about why did they pay Kevin Spacey so much? And I think part of it is because the the rich execs four four and a half million dollars for their company. It's like nothing. Really, what it is is they wanted to meet the guy. Yeah. So they were like, oh, that probably, makes he probably, sense. It probably took him thirty minutes to just read like Chase Bank, the lowest interest rates and. We can, you can they probably them. recorded it on a cell phone. Like, hey, just say it into here. Hey, what's up, buddy? I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Well, they probably just had mics like these. Yeah, just sitting and in the room. No, yeah. And then it really just the executives wanted to shake his hand and be like, Kevin Spacey. So that's, that's so cool. Like, okay, what, what, what star would it take for you to meet? For you to just be overwhelmingly Skylar Potter. starstruck. Not, like, not embarrassed. Starstruck. <laughs> uh See that that I don't really have stars. I mean, I don't know officially, but it's so, like yeah, celebrities don't really get me feeling amped or that crazy. I will say, Skylar, the one celebrity that I have felt like it actually blew my mind when I was in the same room. So one job I had as I was an intern at the Conan Show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there'd be – and I was there only there for about three and a half, four months. And every day there was a different cele- – two celebrities. Did you meet Brent Morin by any chance? Uh, we never uh, – yeah, we met. Yeah, yeah, I was an intern when he was uh, he was a P- PA there. Nice. And he was a very nice guy. And uh, it was kind of like cool. I mean, a few years later, we were like, oh, now he's very successful. Um, but um, So you're working at – you're an intern. But this is my point about, like, celebrities is uh, celebrities don't – Make me feel weird because partially because of that experience, but also if it's a cel- if it's a person who's might not be that famous, but their work means a shit ton to me, a lot to me, then I, I'll get starstruck. That that happens to so me like, too. There's like kind of smaller bands. Like I love a band called Future Islands. I love a band called Arcade Fire. If I saw their any of their bandmates on the street, they're not that famous. They're not famous at all. But I would be like. Oh my God! Right, Julian Casablancas is one. The Strokes lead singer. Okay, uh, who I've seen him in public, and I got like a giddy school. Girl. Okay, so, but you live in New York. Yeah, so you see this. Yeah, I don't that's, see that many celebrities. But I mean, that's that's what I'm never gonna see one walking around Amarillo. Mm. I gotta get the fuck out of here, dog. Hey, you know. But if if I don't think celebrity spotting is the reason. No, 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 no. But just just saying <laughs> when I just said walking yeah. around Amarillo, I was like. I can't be forever. <laughs> that just can't be forever. Let's, um, let's make this the Get this, Skyler Out of Amarillo podcast. We're starting a change.org petition. Uh, donate to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. also tweet at me if you want a Real Brother shirt, and I'll mail you it. 
Yeah, and he'll mail it to you. And they, dude, it. they're dope. Um, what I'll try to do if I can remember, I'll have you send me a picture over yeah, email, yeah, no and I'll try to post it in the oh, description. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that way they can look at. But it. um, anyway, so uh, I was joking, doing another plug. But uh, no, the thing is, I, th- dude, this is what this is about. Like, <laughs> plug away, man. I'm a shell. Let's be uh, honest. Yeah, no, I, um, I am an empty shell of a person. Like. <laughs> We're not even recording. I just do this for friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, I would have just hung out with you for. You yeah. didn't have to put mics in front of our faces. And like if you like, this is all the show. None of this is real. I don't even live here. I broke in here. Like, <laughs> it's a ruse. <laughs> um, but uh, I but I will say the one celebrity in who will like, oh my god, makes you go like. Holy shit, that person radiates. And it makes sense. It's Tom Hanks. I was in just a room with Tom Hanks. Oh, wow. Yeah. They tell us interns, of course, don't say anything to any of the guests, especially the ones that are iconic legends. Yeah. And when just being in the room as Tom Hanks and like making eye contact for three seconds, I was just like, oh, he's been in. The best movies. Dude, like, I'm that. Yeah, so that's the one. I'm I'm that person in public. I, I I don't realize I do it. But, like, if some shit's going on over here, I'm not the person who's doing this and paying attention to it. Yeah. I'm like this. Uh, like, I'm yeah. looking right at it. My girlfriend hates it because I, I, I can't. I don't realize I'm doing it. I'm just watching. I'm, a, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm observing. So, if, like, a couple's getting in a fight. I'm on it. Or I'm uh, watching. mom is screaming at her kids. Or if there's something, if there's a drunk chick in arguing with or, her boyfriend, anything. Or me masturbating. I, just, I'm definitely, yeah. well, I'm filming now. <laughs> You kidding me? I'm See, joining in. Yeah, I just um, got consent. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, I think if I was in a room with Tom Hanks, like, I would just like the way I'm looking at you right now, I'd just be like, I, just, I, you know, I try not. I was trying not to. It's just funny, like trying to act like he's not in the room when it's like, when he's in the room, we all know he's there. But you try and be like, yeah, it's just a normal day. I'm just yeah. a normal intern. And you're no. Of course, you're like, oh my god, that's Tom fucking just, Hanks. You're, you just wow, it's you. You actually are alive. I'm. I always thought you were. I've seen you and stuff, but I now I'm seeing your face that I've seen a lot. Yeah. And now you're here. Whoa, weird. Like it's like, damn, you look the same as you do on the movie, dog. <laughs> what? Um, Why do you have, have you? You don't have to name any names if you don't want to. Have you ever had a bad experience with a celebrity, like or someone that you see as a celebrity, perhaps? Like you maybe were excited to meet somebody, or maybe the internship. And they were just um, dicks, like uh, just just completely rude people. Not personally, to be honest. I mean, me and Scarlett Johansson broke up a few weeks ago, but um, that was rough. Yeah, I read about that on Twitter, man. Yeah. She took that rough. Why'd you leave her, man? Uh, yeah, Halle Berry. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so. I, mean, I mean, gotta move up, <laughs> gotta upgrade. Um, no, I do not have. I yeah, I never. I mean, like, I'll see one celebrity every month and a half in New York, and it's never a story. It's yeah, not it's a good always... story to just say. Hey, I saw What's that dude? Neil Patrick Harris. That's not a story. What's it's a story if you saw Neil Patrick Harris beating the shit out of an old Chinese lady. Yeah. That's interesting because it's like, oh, my God, why was he doing that? But it's just like him walking. I love – like you're like, hmm, is it worse that she's Chinese? Like, <laughs> It would be more interesting yeah. if it was an old Chinese yeah, lady. Yeah, just, like, like beating up my mom. Because it might you know have I mean? a, hate, a hateful element to it. Yeah, all of Neil a sudden P- you're like, oh, no, what happened? You you heard it here first. Neil Patrick Harris, incredibly racist toward Chinese Doesn't, people. Yeah, speci- not Asians. Just the Chinese, right? And it's it, not cool. No it's one can figure it out. Despicable. No. So have you? I mean, have you by chance? Have had I a, had a run-in with a celebrity <clears throat> or heard from a friend like this no, no, but, a dick? No, no, um, no. I ev- that that that's kind of what I was getting at. Every time yeah. I've met somebody that I was really like Felipe and Sparza, met him a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh yeah, he's great. Comic. Incredibly generous and yeah. nice dude. Did he do a show in or around the area? Yeah, yeah, he did. A, he did a show here. Did you open for him? Um, do what? Did you open for him? No, oh, no, no. He did the theater. Yeah, uh, here in town, and uh, um, I got tickets last minute. My yeah. buddy Chaz, who's a comic who's been working for like a month and a half, dude. He just keeps getting like these l- fucking awesome hits, man. The way that like it's so awesome the way it's working out for him. Um, what do you mean awesome hits? His very first time performing mm-hmm. had never done an open mic. Never did anything. Opened up for Chris Kattan. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's his first performance yeah. ever. And then he starts coming to open mics. He's he's working hard, too. It's awesome. That's great, yeah. Um, and then uh, then he runs into Felipe and Sparza. Mm-hmm. Tells him he's a comic. They're friends. That dude, uh, Felipe's opener, needs a haircut. He's a barber. So uh-huh. they they hang out all day. <laughs> you know what funny. I mean? Yeah. 
Uh, so I go to the show. Yeah. And uh, I got a little smoke in my pocket for some, you know, mm-hmm. you know, just in case somebody wants it. Yeah. I was like, you know, you meet a celebrity if you can give them anything. I'm like, this is all I have to offer. <laughs> um, not my conversation, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not interesting to talk to. I get what you're saying, though, that that could be like a – you know, icebreaker or just like a, a, a way in that like, hey, I'm cool. Well, like, I can give you a thing that, you know, might make you have if a, you like doing A little that. bit easier of a night. And I won't offer it if they don't mention anything like that on stage. Or if I if – I No, get, totally. Yeah. yeah like I if, think that's cool. Yeah. Like I just – like if he's like, oh, smoking weed. I'm like, oh, cool. There's my, there's my end. You know, yeah. like there, there you go. So uh, – and he happened to mention it. So <laughs> What uh, if he was like, I'm sucking dick and you're like, that's my end. That's my end. <laughs> that uh, – I tried. I <laughs> You, you haven't seen his new set, have you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nah. Um, um, so uh, I don't have VIP passes, so I can't go meet him. But my buddy Chaz got to hang out with all the comics. They give him an artist pass mm-hmm. to get us in the back. So we're walking back there. Security, cops show up. And we're in this little room. My pocket's screaming. Right? I'm like, I'm going to jail. And then I'm uh, freaking out. And then uh, is it, yeah. they finally let us back there. I didn't give it to him. I uh, just took the picture with him, talked right. with him, and left. But it was it was a really cool – like, that's what got me back there was the fact I had that. It was because the the reason I the dude got the artist pass was to get me back there to give it to him. And it got me, my girlfriend, uh, him, his girlfriend, his son, and my homie all back there to go take pictures, oh, that's meet sweet, him. Man. Yeah. And I didn't give it to him, but I gave it to one of his buddies yeah, to yeah, get yeah. to him. So. Oh, that's sweet. That's really cool of you. Yeah, it was yeah. – it is just like but yeah, nicest dude ever. Tom Segura, nicest dude ever. Stanhope, overwhelmingly just a sweet dude. Well, that's the I find like so Stanhope um I I've, I've, I've never met him, but I find often with comics who let's so like so to speak have like harsh aggressive material. Yeah. and stage presence are also often the nicest people. Yeah. Like, cause like they get out that aggression on stage and then they're like, just so, you know, cool. And I don't know. Whereas yeah. like someone who watches Stanhope who may not know comedy or might just be like, this guy's an asshole. And you're like, no, no. I mean, he's also just performing, but yeah. Yeah. Well, see, I'm a lot more, I'm a loose lipped, I guess on stage. Like yeah. I don't hold my tongue there. Like, oh yeah, we, we wanted to talk. I wanted to talk to you about this. Uh, this is a great example of me not being me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not me on stage. I'm a different me on stage. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had a show. There's some hecklers. Um, one of them was in the back row. One was in the front row. The one yeah. in the front row got shut down. She was real sweet about it. Um, after I got off stage, I went up to her and apologized to her. Uh, she was like, oh, no, 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 you're good. You're good. And uh, so, but the one in the back, I couldn't really deal with. You know what I mean? Couldn't mm-hmm. really see her. Couldn't deal with her. Do a show the next week. She's in the front row. Because I had talked to her after the show. She argued with me for... 45 minutes about how she made the show better by heckling. And I was like, I hate you. And so a week later, that's the classic dumb heckler. I go to perform and she's sitting in the front row. Yeah. Where was this in? Not that I know. This is a, this is at Leftwoods. So anybody who was there definitely knows exactly what I'm talking about because Mm -hmm. she, the first time she deserved to get shut down. She was, she was drunk. The second time she wasn't, she was supporting comedy in Amarillo. Yeah. She had a stupid laugh that it wasn't even stupid. It was just, it was a, honest to god gut laugh like i yeah. she really enjoyed my joke and, I, and then i shut her down and i was so mean to her dude i was so fucking i outed her sex life while i was on stage sky dude it was bad i was just in a bad mood you know what i mean wait it, what i said by the way i said that with such a parental yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's how that's exactly I'm how not my mad boss at you i'm just disappointed that's how my boss talked to me the next day she's like sky why'd sky, you do right. that sit down um put down the cigarette yeah sit down. so uh I I literally wait 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 wait. So basically, if I'm getting this straight, you uh, I I told her heckle you are uh, you shit on a heckler. She wasn't even a heckler in that in that moment. In that she moment, was a, she was just an a, audience a, member, a, a goofy laugher. Yeah, and, and then you were like, I was so mean to her, dude. That but that's just, that's probably just runoff from the last. Time. Yeah, I was like, is this your thing? You like to show up to comedy shows and fucking ruin them? And I was like, Matt, stick your dick in her mouth, make her sh- make her shut up. Yeah. And she got real offended, and I was like, well, he's already, I mean, I can and see. then I was like, he's already done it twice, bitch, shut up, and then, yeah, so. Did you know on authority that it was twice, that she no. hooked up with this guy twice? No. Oh, okay, you just said that. Okay, yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah, but sometimes you just kind of just say things. You just say things in the yeah. moment. Yeah, I felt terrible. I felt so bad that, like, I literally lost sleep. Like, I couldn't sleep that night. I felt <laughs> terrible. 
everyone was telling me, no, nah, dude, you're good. She deserved it from last time. I'm like, yeah, but she didn't deserve it this time. And this, this is when I did it. So, yeah. And this isn't what I didn't get into this to hurt people's feelings. Yeah, I did. Yeah? That's why you suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just come here and be like oh, just, really just be, rude. Yeah, just like be like the best guest ever. Um, but no, yeah, yeah, no. So I actually like I had to like I was texting my friend. And I was like, "Do you know her name?" And he ended up sending me a screenshot where she was like, "You can tell Sky to go fuck himself." And right. I was like, "I definitely deserve that." Yeah. So I hit her up and I was like, "Look, I apologize. You didn't deserve that." Yada yada yada. And she ended up accepting my apology, but also being like, "I'm not coming to any more of your shows." Oh, that sucks. And I was like, "That's under no, it's understandable." I know, no, it's, it sucks, but it's understandable. It's a hundred percent. I I would never hold it against her. If I see her at a show, I'm buying her a drink. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm gonna I'll buy her a ticket into the next show. Like she did not deserve what the fuck I did to her that day. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's just like that's 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 me not being me. I would never treat somebody like that. Not on a stage. If I was off a stage. So I'm gonna like I don't ever want to do that again, right. just because I have the power to, right? You know, just because I'm louder than you because I have a microphone, and yeah. I can spin it to make people laugh. That's not worth shitting on somebody for no reason. Yeah, I mean, especially in this case, I mean, it clearly sounds like in this case it was no reason. I think you were having even uh, the bartender the next day was like, I thought it was a little harsh, but yeah. But I think uh, that's a, that is a thing that I think every comic has done a variation on. Being completely unrightfully rude, harsh, or just mean to an audience member. Yeah. That they might think is either heckling or trying to make the show worse. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, it's a, you know, sometimes we all struggle with it. And I think it's always like a rook move. It's, but we all still can do it. Like even someone 10 years in can do that rookie move. I'm oh, not, yeah. I'm not, I'm saying like, Anytime you do All it. All it is is letting your emotions get the best of you instead of letting your professionalism handle it. Yeah. Uh, no, totally. Yeah. And, like, I, you know, I – one of my – I remember – If anything, I should have thanked her for laughing. I should have been like, thank you. That's a, it's a great <laughs> laugh. Like, I've – that laugh is so silly. I know that was a good joke. Yeah, that's how I should have gone with it. You could have addressed, but instead it. I was like, "Fuck you!" Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you could have addressed if you feel like you have to address. Like, oh, that's a very distinct laugh. There's a, there's definitely a way to address that and have it feel like funny. We're all in this together. Yeah, not like, playfully ribbing. Oh, dude, I, st- than, yeah. I, I, I brought the show to a halt. Oh, that sucks. You know what I mean? Like yeah, one of those, yeah. uh, and like the audience was still on my side. Yeah. And that and, and then that made me feel how, even worse. How long was the set? Um, minute, Fifteen minutes. I was do I did like twenty, yeah. and it was maybe like seven minutes in. Okay, yeah. Did you find it harder for the last? Oh time? yeah, 10, I struggled super hard. It, 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 what I did was I I tried to jump back in my material, wouldn't work. Like I I couldn't remember where I was at. Like cause I, I was already I already felt bad at this point. Like yeah. I, it, once it was over. Oh, and then this comic from Lubbock. I'm not gonna say his name because I'm upset with this. Yeah. Um, he does his time. He gets off stage. The host is about to introduce another comic. He goes, oh, I got one more joke. Runs up there, grabs the mic, what? Does, does his joke, hands it back to the, the, the host. So now the host has to introduce another comic. He tries to bring it back with some jokes, introduces another comic. Uh, he goes, then I go. Uh, he's watching my set uh, right after, dude. I was a brand- This is why it was so hard to come back. Right after I shut her down, I'm, on, like, I'm bringing it back. He jumps on stage, takes the mic from me, and was like, yo, you guys, I'm going back to Lubbock. Uh, just want to tell you guys thank you, yada, yada, yada. They're putting it down, da, 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 and then hands me the microphone back and leaves. So this guy, after his set, took the mic two more times. Two more times. Who? This isn't a comic. He's a comic. No, he's not a comic. That's not a thing a comic does. Dude, I was so – and then like, and then I was, like, I was re- like, what the fuck is going on, dude? The, the only time you get to – Touch the microphone after you said, "All right, good night," or "Thanks, guys." After you finished your set, is if they encore you, or <laughs> you don't get to at the very end of the show. You go, "Don't forget to tip the uh, waitresses and bartenders." I want to thank you guys for coming no, out. No, yes, I, we I, have merch over here. No, I I mean like, that's fine if you say like that after saying "Thanks, guys," for your set, yeah. and then maybe you do a little. But joke wise, but you don't get to finish your set and then go, "Oh, wait a minute, I have one more thing I want to say." As the host is like, "All right," so, and then just hijack. This that's does he, that's not a thing a real comedian does. And if you no no and bullshit. then I was and I was headlining. So he like, he walked up and grabbed the mic if, from me. Yeah, I was the last comic on stage. Yeah, I was and like and I was already fighting the audience to be back on my side. 
Dude, it was so incredibly well, weird. Well, I mean, that just dis- disrupts the show. That disrupts your set's momentum. That It just makes everything look amateurish. Like, oh, you can just... So he just snatched it out of your hand? Yeah, and it was like one of those things. Like, he got up there so fast that I didn't know what to do. Like, I'd already been rude to her. I'm already still r- mulling over that in my head. Yeah. When he handed it up, I honestly, I swear, I thought he was going to kick me off stage. You know what Jeez. I mean? Like, fuck you. She didn't deserve that. And I was going to go, you're right. She didn't. And I was going to get off stage. That's what I thought was happening. Yeah. He was just saying bye to everybody. I don't. How many people are at the show? Like 30 people? Yeah, 30, 40. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't I'm, I'm telling you, on if this. Okay, so I'm not trying to sound douchey, but I do think if you did that in, I don't know, more other. I don't Somewhere know, outside of Amarillo. That you would be. Uh, like kind of blackballed. Yeah. If you did that at a club show in New York, that club, and you're not even if you're fucking even no Chappelle wouldn't even do that shit. Yeah. Because he like, knows that's so r- rude to your other performers. Yeah. That's so incredibly rude. That's that, that. It's like one of those things when people are like, "The show's about me." Yeah. It's and then it's like it's okay to have your set be a little bit about you. It's your set, but. Fucking taking a microphone from a comedian. What are you doing? Dude, yeah. it was. I actually, I'm like confounded. Dude, that, I've this never is seen how, that before. This is how the last couple of weeks have gone. Uh, that hard hat that's right behind you, someone threw that at me while I was on stage. Would you have a joke about construction workers? No. I was talking about <laughs> skydiving. I, I was kidding. <laughs> I know, but the dude like threw it at me and like, it was like out of the corner of my eye. He didn't like chunk it. He like lobbed it at me. And I turned and I saw it, so I caught it and threw it back at him in like one motion. Oh. And I was like, "What the fuck was that? This is at a mic." It was like at my, f- and I was killing. I was having like a great set, and I was like thirty seconds from being off stage. Was he trying to throw out like a rose? No, it's he red? was. He, he was. It turns out he was on mushrooms. That's what it turned out. So, he, uh, yeah. What are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> turns out he's on mushrooms, man. And uh, so it's not even. It's like. Here's the thing. I felt worse what about. I show, felt. What are comedy show? I gotta interrupt you. I'm sorry. I felt worse about the fact I ruined his trip by throwing it back at him. <laughs> after I found out he's well, on that's, mushrooms. That's your drug idness. Yeah. Where you're like, no, I got you know, dropping uh, hallucination etiquette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my fault, dude. That, <laughs> you oops. disrupted. I should have looked at your pupils. That's my fault. That was my fault. I should have looked for pucks, man. So, Do you have hockey pucks for eyes? That's my fault. What the? What is his show in Amarillo? What is his show? It's weird, man. It I, depends on what. It depends on what venue you're at. Like, there's a venue here in town that's nothing but bikers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, super fun. Mm. Here's the thing: it's the hardest venue to play, but you'll make the most money. Oh, okay, yeah. It's that's, it's hard. That's often how it is. Yeah, it's really hard to play, yeah. but they'll pay you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. I mean. You got to be careful, too, man. There was this one time, because I know for sure, I know people who have been beat up there. And, like, I was, like, I, <laughs> one of my buddies was, like. Beat up. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just, like, got their ass whooped. No, like, I know. Not, not I, as far as comics. I just, know, like, people in general. <laughs> I know what the beat up means. Yeah. I meant, like, I shouldn't have interrupted your story. But I meant beat up related to comedy or beat up they went out and they were just drinking. Yeah, and, just b- both. No, no, no. Not so much performers. Perform- okay, cool. I've never really known of a p- performer to get his ass whooped in town. Yeah. Um, but no, I've, I've, I've had friends who've been beat up there. That's what I'm saying. Damn, what bro. My dogs are going crazy. Yeah. I'm about to go, I have to go figure out what that is. Yeah, if you gotta go do that. I'm gonna pause this real quick. I think pause she got in the trash. Oh. Alright, we're back. So that was actually, both my dogs were laying on their back and just kicking the wall with their be- bottom feet. <laughs> like, that's, that's all they were doing. They were both just actively kicking the wall at the same time. They are just bored, and they're <laughs> like, what, what haven't we done? What, to what really drives our that's, owner crazy? That's super funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, no. So I, uh, one time I did, I thought a comic was gonna get beat up at that bar. Is yeah. what? Because uh, w- once again, get it, letting your emotions get the better of you. He was like, "Can someone put a dick in their mouth or a beer so they'll shut the fuck up?" And I was like, "I need to tab out right now." Is that? Can I interrupt? Is that the go-to? No, no, no. thing to just go put a dick in their mouth. No, no, no. <laughs> the, uh, that was the. The first time this dude has ever combated a heckler, uh-huh. and he just wasn't ready for it, and like it, it, um, it was just a bad. The whole show had gone poorly. Yeah, you know what I mean. And a lot of us can handle, like, if we're like, this isn't going well, we'll do a little bit of crowd work until we can. Like, we'll what I don't do crowd work. What I'll do is I'll do crowd work that leads into my material. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Um, but uh, 
Austin Eulen, he'll he'll do a whole set of crowd work. Mm-hmm. He'll just go up for fifteen minutes, not do a single bit. Yeah. And like that impresses me. I can't do that. Yeah. Can you do that? Uh I don't think I've done uh a set of just crowd work ever now. That sounds awful, doesn't it? I mean, I like material because material is It's a safety net. What's material? It's what stand up comics should do. Yeah. And have. I mean when you're having your best sets, that's usually when you're interspersing being present with your material. And then you're almost like, when you're having a great set, you're almost like saying the bit in a way that you didn't have it before because it's just sounds yeah. so natural and you're like really in the moment. I hate whenever you're all, like whenever you're overwhelmingly present, like you're aware yeah. of everything. That's the worst. But but I think like comics, the job is material. Like the only thing that people think about when they think about stand-up is great bits but no one watches there's why like no crowd work has ever been recorded and for stand-up put onto like a special yeah because it's like in the moments where there is is steve hofstetter if he puts out a special that's the you know who that is i i I feel bad because i feel like he invites hecklers to his show now i pretty much yeah i don't know i don't know i think maybe i don't but I, maybe I'm not saying he openly, like, hey, Heckler's coming to my no, show. No, I think heck, people have seen, that's like one of the things he's famous for. So they're like, I can go there and I can heckle. And they think, and maybe in some ways they think that's part of what stand-up is. And stand-up, there's a beauty to stand-up in that it's rougher and it's like a more interactive form of live performance than like a theatrical thing. Like I don't ever have such a, people should, I don't ever, I don't believe people should have such a reverence for stand-up that they're treating it like theater where they're just like, you can be a little more, rough around the edges or just rough and tumble and like some hooting and hollering and interacting with the audience. But, uh, I do think he probably because of it, the perception around him with fans and stuff think, Oh, stand ups about heckling a little bit. And maybe about who the hell. That's the scariest thing, man, is a heckler, a good heckler. (laughs) That's so fucking scary. You know what I mean? Yeah, when uh, have you been got? Have you been oh, yeah. unreco- irrecoverably got? Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. It's never and like you know when it happens. Yeah. Dude, the moment they speak and you hear you, dude, there's like you're like, you have to have a comeback right then. It, it has to be better than what the fuck they just said. Yeah. And like, if you take three seconds, it's over. Yeah. And you'll sit there like. Usually they're not even done laughing before your time's up. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> dude, it's, yeah. I don't know if my material or my stand-up doesn't really invite heckling as much. I do a lot of questions, like, like, and it's like, you guys ever do this one? Like, I do it like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's, it's just the way I talk. Yeah. Hey, bro, you ever done this? You ever done, and like, and usually it's something they've never done. Right. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's something that we all do, and that's why it's funny. But I just, I open with like I used to do it on purpose to shut the audience up at mics because there was not a lot of comedy. So I would point and I would ask somebody the question, and it's usually yes or no, so they can nod. They don't have to talk. And then I, what that did was it made it relatable for me and him, and it would make them quiet to see how our interaction went. That's very smart, yeah, uh, especially in rooms that you do where people aren't geared in stand-up mode. Yeah. I think that's a very smart thing to do. But then it worked its way to where I was doing it on bigger stages, and I was like, I can't do that. Oh, okay, because well, I mean, yeah. you're asking like thirty people because well, they're all right there now, yeah. and then like people in the back are yelling now, and yeah, it, that's that's the tricky thing with shows, especially on the road. If like if you're hosting, you want to you kind of the thing that really can kind of crack the audience and get them a little more is you kind of have to start with crowd work as a host. Anytime you see a host not open on interacting with the audience at all, it always feels weird. Uh, at I least, can see at least that, man. That small, is great s- advice. Smaller shows, like, you know, 30 to 60 people in a, 30 to 50 people in a, in a room. Like, if it's like a theater, which I've only done theaters twice, Yeah. Um, I think you can probably just go into doing stand-up because they get the conventions of the show. But when it's like a 30, you have to make them feel comfortable in just going in and robotically doing material will just like they they just won't feel part of it. Yeah, that's and another thing. The first comic can do that, but as the host, I hate when I watch a host 
just go – I was on the subway today, and this guy – and I'm like, no, ask him. Even if you're not hilarious, and that's okay. You don't have to – as the host, you don't have to be hilarious. And two, you don't have to – like, you don't have to kill. You should do very well. But if you're not in kill mode, that's kind of the first comic, second – that's like the comic's job. I mean, on the shows I do, we The most it. comfortable place is like third – yeah, the shows we I do on the road, it's usually a host, my, my, me and my brother. So okay. there's three of us. The host will do 15, I'll do about 35, 40, and my brother will do 35 to 45, depending on the show. Yeah. And um, so, but occasionally I will host. And uh, yeah, I I don't know. I abide by that. Third, third in a showcase show with like six, seven comics. Third is the sweet spot because they're broken in. They kind of get it, and they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, third's the best. Like I there's a there's enough comics in town now. And they're not tired. Yeah. And they're not like their intention spans aren't waned or you know worn down at all because yeah. they've only watched probably like 20 25 minutes like max. Yeah. Yeah. They still it's, have laugh energy. There's a, there's enough comics in town now that like if I don't have to I won't go last. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just cuz like I, I for 2 years I was always going last. Yeah, and like there's some like on like a three or four setup with three or four comics, best thing you can do is go last. And sometimes we do like seven or eight. Yeah, and I'm waiting through eight comics. Ten, like eight ten minute sets. Yeah, yeah, like or like ten sometimes, and then it's Amarello, dude. Some people don't even know what that flashlight means. You know what I mean? Uh, so run the light, and you're like. Yeah, dude, e- don't run the light even if uh, you're it's killing. a lot better now. This was a couple of years ago. Like sure. no, like like I didn't even I wasn't even aware. Like the first time I tried to do the light, I had heard about it. I was like, that's a great idea. I forgot to tell anybody about yeah. it, and I was just doing it. And they're like, that was cool. Are you taking pictures? I was like, no. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was trying to get you off stage. <laughs> I was like giving you the two minute light. Yeah, like eight times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but no, it's good now. But yeah, so we have enough comics, dude. There's this dude, Colin Robinson. Yeah. The way he writes is so fucking phenomenal. Like he just takes one topic mm-hmm. and just milks it for e- like his whole set will be about one thing, and it's just the way he writes. Like he has this one where he's talking about how he's like a Republican now, mm-hmm. and like it, it sounds like he's trying to be pot. Like I'm a Republican now, and he's trying to be positive, but everything he says is like s- s- just backhanded. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's it, I'm trying to think of like one good example without giving away like all of his jokes. Um, like oh, he's like he's like uh one thing I am bummed out was that I thought whenever I became Republican I'd become instantly rich, but no, <laughs> you know shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, Just yeah. talking about how he's like I have received two guns in the mail already, so it's been pretty good <laughs> doing stuff like that. And then he has one where he's like I wish I was a black comic man. I, you know, it's just because as a white comic I can only talk like, if I talk about this it's great, but as a black comic I can come out and be like. What the fuck is going on? And he goes high energy, dude, pacing the stage, and then he does like five minutes, Mm -hmm. and then he's like, "But I can't do that because I'm not a black comic." Uh And dude, it crushes. It just it's his the way he writes. And then as like on the side, he makes hot sauces for fun. Uh And so like he bought like Carolina Reapers and Ghost Peppers and made these five hot sauces. And for our first Yellow City Comedy open mic uh, last this last this month, it was on the third uh, third Wednesday, we. we all ate like five of the hot wing. Like we put the hot sauces on these wings and ate them on stage, and for everybody, oh, like, cool. dude, yeah, dude, it was fucking ridiculous. It was hot. And it, it was, was kind of stupid. Watching people. It took a long suffer. time. Yeah, I don't know if anybody enjoyed it. We were trying to push the sauces and stuff. You know what I mean? And it's well, it's like the spectacle of watching people hurt themselves. Hurt themselves by and, eating. And then we did, we did five of his sauces, and then one we did the last dab from Hot Ones, the Pepper X. The one that's like the hot dude. The web series show. Yeah, we yeah. did like the hottest one they do. We oh, had that okay. too. That one like, I it's mean, like two point five seen an million scoble. Like, people will. I don't. People always say like it's two point five million scovels. I don't even have a reference point for what a scoville is. Apparently, uh, the, neither did I. I had to ask. That's how uh, two point five. Apparently, is a lot. Apparently, a no. Jala- I can trust because I've seen people like a jalapeno vomit. is five thousand, and it's two point five million. So that is a multiple. I'm not going to do math on it, but it's a lot harder. Uh, I'm not going to do math on it, but it's like 500,000 times it. Yeah. yeah dude. Shit, I might have. Don't check my math, everybody. Yeah, Put that's down the calculator. Put 50, it down. That's 50,000, I think. Uh, whatever it is, it's a lot. Dude. Yeah, and that's a, a jalapeno is already, you know, it got a little spice. but It was much. really, that it was it was okay. It was bearable up until the last one was Strawberry Reaper. Yeah. So Strawberry Carolina Reaper. 
And that one was I have I have a bottle of each one in my fridge. Actually. Yeah, that also sounds like a weed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All the hot sauce and weed names. Yeah, are well, intermingled. Let's see. The the yeah, you're right. Because the second the the second hottest one was uh, ghost ghost pepper blueberry uh, blueberry ghost pepper. Yeah, yeah. That can also that can also work as blueberry a, ghost. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. Colin. You son of a bitch. Yeah, it's just the scene blowing up, man. That's great, man. So you're kind of the granddaddy of the scene. I love that, that term. Yes, thank you. But I, I, I will never my... say it. I will never say it, and I'll never tell people that. But like, if you introduce yourself as I am the granddaddy of the scene, <laughs> you don't. I would never even to... tell somebody I started. Like I, I, I try not to take any risk. Like I don't. Does that make sense? Like I don't want any credit. No, no but it's it, you know it's okay to. Uh, I don't know about take credit, but it's okay to. I'm just excited people are excited for comedy. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't care who started it. It would have been cool if it was already going when I started, so yeah. I could have – it would have been a lot easier to advance. Well, maybe not. Maybe it would have been a lot harder. Yeah. Who but knows? I think it's really cool because I think – I mean, you are one of the you know kind of founders of a scene here, and that is really cool. And yeah. And my you bu- should take pride in that. I, really I, am, I am very proud. I, and I'm actually – I'm proud of the scene. I am more proud of the people of Amarillo that show up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so they can get heckled by you and told to oh put a dick God, in their mouth. Come on, dude. <laughs> I still feel bad about that. I still I I'm so, kidding. I got I got your ticket to the next show. <laughs> if you hear this, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not going to say your kidding. name. I was kidding. I didn't mean to make you feel guilty again. No, it's true, though. I, but, yeah, I, I, am, I am proud of the people because people are showing up. People yeah. are following. People are listening to podcasts. Right. I would – most of the time, when I say podcast in Amarillo, people go, what is that? Oh, that they don't mean. know what it is. See, so the yeah. fact that I have a following on my podcast is impressive to me. Right. So I'm not proud of, like, I, that's so stupid that I'm not proud of what I do. I'm proud of the people who listen to what I do. Like, I'm like, thank you. I guess I'm 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 thankful is probably the right the right word. Yeah, I'm thankful for Amarillo. To, they're actually doing. Oh, I think that's, like, the balance between the value of this is a smaller scene versus there's just many different pros and cons between a smaller scene. One here is like you can be sort of a bigger fish or you can kind of make your name a little more known and maybe get a little bit of uh, of a following. Whereas in New York, it's such a endlessly expanding universe man, of comedians. And I want to go and check it out so bad. Yeah, man, hit me up if you ever visit. Yeah. Um, that like – uh, it's just one of the, yeah, the balance. I mean, so like starting in New York can be really hard because you're one of a trillion, not literally, but you're, you're one of thousands. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard from multiple people who do mics in New York yeah. that, uh, and this isn't, they, they say it's not the case for every open mic, but most of the times it's just other comedians. Almost all of the times. Yeah. So 99% of the time. And then he's like, it makes it really hard to do well. It makes it hard to do well, and it makes it more importantly hard to know what's great material. Because right. sometimes you can just like you're just in a room with just comics; who, they're not there to laugh. I'm not. You can't be mad at it. It's you're not there to laugh. They're not there. Dude, to watch I watched. A show. I I laughed so hard, not out loud during Felipe's set. Like whenever you're watching, you're yeah. listening, you're breaking down right. everything. You're you're looking how the jokes are built. You're that, that, right when you watch a comic, you're you're not. I don't always. Yeah, no, you're right. It's hard. I like I, I think it's hard for somebody who doesn't do, who's never done comedy or performance or anything like that, to to. We don't watch it the same as they do. Oftentimes, when I find something really funny, I don't have the joyful laugh. I'll just be like, "That's super funny." That's so good. Which is like not good. <laughs> yeah, it's not good that I now like instead of showing eliciting joy, I just go like, "Yeah, that's funny." Nailed it, <laughs> dude. That is hilarious it's like, like well wouldn't it be better if you felt that uh unlocked the actual joy of laughter but um yeah it's mostly comics and yeah so, you know it's so it sucks because they're not the right barometer of a great bit because they might have a different sensibility and who gives a shit if you do well for comics that's not good what is being a comedian is being a comedian is everyone has to tell me that like they'll be like dude it's just a mic and i'm like yeah but i didn't do well <laughs> you know what i mean it's like I, one of those things like you're like you want to do well every single time. You, it's why you do this. You do, but you want to make sure you're being okay with not 
doing well. Dude, in you terms have of, you have to bomb because you want to bomb on a mic before you bomb on a like at a show. But also, but also like that's how you get material. Like uh, I don't know. It'll you make you fix a joke real quick, or it'll make you just like sometimes I need to go up there and I just kind of have that an idea and I don't need to don't feel the need to get kill, especially at an open mic. I don't like uh, I'm, that's not how I grow. If I right. just did. Ten minutes, I'm confident in the sun. Well, see, yeah, I, at the mic, like I, I would never do, like material material. I would do like stuff that's in the, in the wheelhouse, like in so, the, something in the, something in the you're, development. You're stage. working on, yeah, or something that I was like, fuck it. I thought it was on the plane right here, and I'm just gonna say it because I can, and we'll see if it gets a laugh, and maybe something's there. Right. Um, see, that's a great way to to look at it too. Like lately, I, I I haven't been writing the way that I want to. Like I I keep coming up with ideas but they're all stories yeah and so writing a story is really boring <laughs> yeah because you already know it you know what i mean so now you're trying to write like whenever you're writing a joke and you're coming up with shit like it's always that's super fun like it when it happens the right way like you're like going to town writing but when you're like when i write a story i get real bored because i already know what comes next and yeah. now i'm just trying to punch it up so that's something I think I should do on stage. Yeah, is take that to stage and work on it there versus actually sitting down to write it. The best, it's like the best is when you are feeling really funny and you're actually for the first time saying a bit and you're feeling funny, so it's coming out how it should be. Oh, the, like the first time you do it on stage and you know it's a good bit. And no, 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 no. I mean, like when you haven't really written it, written it, but it's been in your head, and you're like, "I'll just say it," and you're f- you're feeling funny. And okay, you're yeah, feeling yeah. Funny, and you say a thing for the first time. That's how it should probably be because yeah. that's you're actually feeling the energy. Whereas, like, it's kind of, it's you're writing on stage authentically. I hear comedians say, oh, "I write on stage," and I'm like, "You can't at an open mic because you don't feel funny." Yeah, and it's like three to five minutes at the most. It's like three to four minutes set. You don't feel the energy and momentum of. And see, we're jaded here, man. Yeah. I was, since I run the one of the open mics, and then we have our buddy runs the other one that has three a month now instead of just two. Cool. Like we only had two a month. Then we made this one, which is the third one. I keep pointing like you're gonna see it. It's yeah, all the way yeah, across town. Um, oh, and, there it is. No, yeah. Do you see that mic over there? <laughs> um, and then uh, we started another one. So like we're jaded, man. We get ten minute sets. Uh, at yeah. mics, I would say you're spoiled. Yeah, well, like ten well, minutes well, in front of an audience. Yeah, well, spoiled and then like jaded in the fact that you said three, and I was like, that would that sounds so scary. Three yeah. three minutes sounds fucking terrifying. Ah, I mean, it's just it's with it's other comics and you kind of just say the bits. And you just go up there and you're just like literally reading them off, like <laughs> looking at faces to see if like the, at least the premise is sparking interest in yeah, anybody. You don't you don't bring out like a sense of it's a show. Like you don't bring more energy bits so it's a little more just is there a lot robotic. of joke theft not really no. that, that's good I, you know that's like I hope any person who calls himself one hundredth of a comedian would ever steal a joke yeah because you just that's th- th- that's not why we t- it's, it, that's like that's not how you become like a comic right eventually you can't steal jokes right and eventually Joe Rogan will call you out on your career <laughs> That's a career that deserved to be ruined, though. Yeah, and you dude, built it off of other it, people's work. It's terrible that I could. Wa- I I used to watch that TV show whenever it was on, co- and I knew it was terrible when I was a child. I was a kid. I was like, I lived with my mom. I was watching it in my bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. it, I'm not gonna say the name of the show. I don't want to. It's the show that shall not be named. <laughs> it's like the Voldemort of God. Yeah, Mencia. It, that's the show, and yeah. that's the comedian. Accused and who has admitted to stealing material. Right, and he's a piece. Of, like I, I never found him funny. And, and like, what sucks is the jokes that I super found hilarious. Like the few that I was like, "Damn, that's actually funny." Were the ones that came out <laughs> as super stolen. He took a Bill Cosby bit. Who steals? Yeah, and then from, what's, uh, what's at the time the, the most chick. beloved comedian? Uh, what's her, again? There's another Mo- Morgan at the time. Murphy. He took that Morgan Murphy. Is that her uh, name? I don't know. I don't know. I know that name, but I don't know the bit. It's the one where she's all, "You scratch it and then you smell it, bitch." Like she did. Like there's a there's a video on YouTube of her doing it like three years before his special came out with that oh. joke on it. And dude, it's fucking word for word. Yeah. And she's doing it in like a basement room, you know, like a, like a, like a mic or something. That's crazy. That yeah, you could just be at a bar show and you're like, it, it like the idea that you would have to be paranoid. Of saying your bit, and I've had someone told me someone has lifted part of a bit for me, and I heard that and I was like, 
well, they're not going to be as funny about it as me because it came from my head. Yeah. And if it's so, like, it was, like, annoying, I haven't officially seen them do it, but someone told me, and I was just, I felt the sense of, like, okay, they're lost. Yeah. Because instead of them trying to actually come up with an original funny idea, they just lifted part of one for, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's one of the, like, I hate whenever you have the idea. Like, if you're in the middle of writing, you're like, fuck, have I heard this before? Mm -hmm. That's, like, a bad feeling. Or, like, thinking, like, you have, like, have you ever done that? You think of a bit and you start, like, while you're writing, you yeah. you you think of a comic in your head? You've never done that? Yeah, no, I definitely oh. have done that. And then I have to start Googling. Like, I go to YouTube and I start typing in the comic that I just, like, saw, like, a glimpse of in my head. The worst is when you've, like, done a bit and then after you realize, like, oh, that was Brian Regan's bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. That hasn't happened to me in, like, a couple years. But still, like. I had one that was real close to Brent Morin's. And, like, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I didn't take it from him. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's okay I, if it's a similar thing. Well, it was just a calling the basically it was calling the teacher mom. Uh, I think that's a little more universal. Yeah, that's that's but it that's, was. But it was the way I said it. It there. was like the delivery on it sounded it, it to the point where like three people had come up to me and yeah. were like, and I was like, oh, well, I didn't know, and like, yeah. and then I, I hadn't seen the bit. It was on his special, I guess. So I went and watched his special on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it was somewhere in there. Or I, I remember so either that or it was like on YouTube. Someone right. sent me a link or told me it was on Netflix. I watched it. And I was like, that's too close for comfort. Never did it again. Yeah, and that's an example of – that it doesn't sound like you even stole because I don't even think you had seen him do the bit. Yeah. But that sounds just like, oh, I'm not going to write a song that someone's already written. Right, like I'm like – yeah, exactly. Even if you'd never heard Stairway to Heaven but if and you, you put those chords together and then someone showed it to you, you yeah. drop it. You go, oh, right. fuck. Okay. But if the and they probably stole that actually I've heard, um, but uh, they stole that from Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan wrote "Stairway to Heaven." I would know that. The um, but uh, yeah, the general like oh, if you had the if your premise was both calling the teacher mom, that's a that's a that's a universal enough premise. Well, I think it was it wasn't even a premise. It was like it was literally a tag. It yeah. was just a tag that sounded the same. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I feel it, you. But yeah, I, I would never steal a joke on purpose. Like, even have you ever had someone tell you to do that? To what? Like, uh, I think it was my dad, because he doesn't really understand comedy. People will uh, he frequently after shows say a, a thing to you, and it's usually not that funny. But they'll be nice about it. Oh no, no, no! And no. they'll say like, "You can use that," and you're like, "Why the hell would I put that in my act?" Well, no, I uh, my dad told me he's like, "Just go uh, watch some of the old comedians that you liked," and then take that material and go do it on stage so you know that like when I first was starting he was basically telling me to steal their jokes to, <laughs> to get comfortable being on stage and I was like dad uh, you can't do that that's funny yeah, yeah. no it's just, I mean he means he well because well, he's a musician and he plays a lot of covers cover songs so he doesn't see it as a bad thing at all right he's like I play covers make it your own I'm like no now I'm stealing not only am I I'm not just plagiarizing now I'm fucking you're telling me to take it and make it my it's, that's a that's joke theft I can't do that yeah no, yeah. that, I could see how a musician who would have just a completely opposite view of it than you. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah, but that's not. That's Plus, that's he's left-handed, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Start I love my dad. Against yeah. left-handed. No, people. Uh, I love him. Too, I found man. out my dad was left-handed because I picked up his guitar one day, and it's a left-handed guitar, so we can't play the same guitar. Mm. The strings are on like they're all backwards. Yeah, and then he has like Les Pauls and all that. He has like. A badass collection of guitars. They're all left-handed, so I can't play any of them. Uh -huh, of course, <laughs> it's a bummer. Nah, it Super sucks. bummer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so where, where, where's your gig at tonight? Uh, West Texas A and M doing a college gig. Yeah. So it's at eight o'clock, and uh, yeah, it's in Canyon, Texas. Yeah. Have you played that room before? No, I've never done the school before. The, when I met you, I think I was doing Amarillo College. Oh yeah, that's right. And <clears throat> yeah, um, so yeah. That. No, yeah, just fun doing college gigs and, you know, some kids hopefully come out and, I don't know, get to, you do get to do an hour or 70 minute set, which is great. Oh, dope. You, you use like that, you would never get in New York unless you're a, uh, like true to, like a proper headliner at clubs and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Well, congratulations, man. Oh yeah, I've, I've, this is like. I, I'm just glad I, things are going good for you, man. It's going okay, yeah, it's, I mean, in no way, 
just like with every comic, all you have to do is just like I, that you have that thing written on your wall, and it's the only advice in comedy that applies. It's I think it's from Doug Stanhope. It's written on like a program or something. Oh, it's on, yeah, on and a it's just bo- it's keep a book. going. It's a picture of a book. I have a book in there. He signed for me. Yeah, that's all the that's all you do in stand. You just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, things are going pretty well. But uh, yeah, I'm living off stand up, but uh, it's in no way it's my gangbusters. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, I didn't expect to be rich. Yeah, especially since you and Scarlett just broke up. <laughs> <laughs> I know my 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 golden ticket. Yeah, at go- the beginning of the podcast, I called myself a Hollywood heartthrob, which we never addressed. Was clearly <laughs> not sincere. Yeah, <laughs> I have a weird looking fucking Frankenstein face. <laughs> just so people know, not like how conceited. I'm gonna post a picture of you, and it's just gonna be James Franco. <laughs> I'm just gonna post James Franco. That's <laughs> fine. He's, he's more <laughs> handsome than I. I will concede. But yeah, man, how, it's going good for you too. Yeah, everything's going great, man. Yeah. I, like I said, scenes blowing up. I haven't been doing this is my first podcast in like three weeks. Oh, uh, cool, man! Thanks for doing it. Yeah, um, I, I'll be honest. It's because I've been playing Magic the Gathering, <laughs> and so I got to stop. I got to lay off that shit. I'm glad I brought you back to the yeah. cast. And this is way more fun, honestly, than I remember it being. Yeah, it's like I've been in this weird. All I've been doing is watching Ninja Turtles. I don't have internet right now. Oh, no Netflix or nothing. So I've just been. I have a. I have every original episode of the Ninja it's Turtles. Very, it's tough to live without Wi-Fi. It's impossible. Yeah, dude, the first two weeks is harder than quitting drugs. I bet. Dude, it's because you're like, I'm so used to it. Like, it's not just like Netflix. You're like, okay, well, if I wasn't doing that, I was playing online games or I was podcasting, which involved YouTube and getting on the internet to post it and do it. Like, dude, everything I did revolved around having Wi Fi. Yeah. And it was was incredibly difficult. Any? None. What are we on? uh, My hotspot, but it's not working. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was like, but you loaded a YouTube, but it's like a super. Um... Yeah, it's my it's my Sprint. Which, by the way, Sprint is such bullshit, dude. They say within one percent of the competitor, that is, I'll, you can just lie on commercials. Oh yeah, you can. Because no one's gonna take the time to to fact check you. Yeah, even just loading a Gmail, it would take like thirty seconds, and you're like, yeah, saying you just load a video, and it kind of takes a while. Oh, this one, this one's working great now. That's, I let I let it sit for a while. Well, you know what it might be? It might be. Oh, it worked well. Yeah, boom. I was going to say, hey. I was going to say, well, it's like, it's always the case of like, oh, the ad loads perfectly. <laughs> I've always noticed this, dude. If I'm out, like, like if I'm at work and I'm on my phone, I can, I can watch, or anywhere, I can watch, a, I'm alone. I can watch a thousand YouTube videos, not a single ad. The moment you're like, oh, dude, have you seen this? And you pull it up. <laughs> it's not, it's a, it's, it's like a 45 minute ad that you can't skip and it yeah. somehow charges you a dollar just to watch. <laughs> like it's, you know what I mean? Every time you're yeah. excited, it's like whenever you're in a hurry, like I hit red lights anytime I want to uh, go somewhere. You know what I mean? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I had an old bit about when your friend, I haven't done it in like a few years, but it was kind of funny. It was an old bit about when your friend's like, oh dude, you got to check this video out. And you're like, all right. And they show you it, and you see that it's like nine and a half minutes long, and you just heart fills with dread. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what do you think of my schedule? Do yeah, you yeah. think I have just free time? And I do, but come on, man. You see a nine-minute video, and you're just like, what the? I didn't what? know we were going to watch like Lord of the Rings right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put on the director's <laughs> cut, too. <laughs> three hours to just stand over your shoulder. No, oh. You show me a 15-second clip of a kitten getting hit in the nuts. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh. Maybe my dad would tell me to take that and make it my own, I think. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never could get it to, like, really get big laughs. But, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm also funnier now, or at least better at uh, translating my thoughts on stage. So maybe I'll try it again. One of my favorite things to do, like, recently, like I said, since I haven't been writing the way I want to, mm-hmm. um, I'll just go through my book and find jokes that didn't work. Yeah. Like, at all. like Or, like, they they worked, but it was weird. They worked, like, twice, and then they stopped working. Oh, I hate that, yeah. Um, and then they're two years old, you know what I mean? And even if they're not relevant, that's my favorite, is if they're like, there's zero relevancy. Like, they're about a celebrity that's like, the scandal's come and gone, nobody cares. Yeah. See if I can make that work. That's fun. You know what I mean? There's some that'll, there's like evergreen news stories in terms of, it's not really news, it's just such a pop cultural big thing that you can make jokes on it for you can always make an oj joke if you find a new angle oh yeah because it's just that's not a news story that's just an entrenched it's know, a, it's it's phenomenon yeah that's it's a bad word choice but you know what i'm going for <laughs> it's um, a big deal it's it's still it's yeah. like it's and then he keeps getting in trouble 
Yeah, poor uh, poor OJ. Oh yeah, poor guy. He's innocent. You yeah. know, who I think uh, I told my mom this is just a conversational joke I said like recently on the phone. My mom like is a Midwestern mom, so she's obsessed with like John Benet Ramsey shit. And I told my mom, I said, "Mom, you know who the I found it. I looked it up. I, yeah, I know who the real killer of John Benet Ramsey is." And she goes, "Who?" And I said, "OJ." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I wish I could joke with my mom like that. Like, my mom laughs at, like, weird stuff. Like, whenever, when I don't think I'm being funny, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, whenever I'm just, like, talking and, like, in passing, she'll laugh at shit I say then, but then any joke I've ever, any joke I've ever said to her is, like, stone face. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. What are you trying to do? Yeah, 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 she just, it's over, you know what I mean? It just doesn't. (laughs) I only ever kill accidentally and bomb intentionally. Yeah, with my mom anyway. Like it's it's like one of those things. You just you can't make if I don't like my family to come to the shows. First off. Oh no, it's the worst. Having anyone you who knows you be at a show is the worst. Yeah, I don't mind my friends. Uh I don't it, mind some of my friends. It you know, I think this is where it's if they're there and there's enough other audience members so they get to see you actually in front of people. Whereas yes. if it's like Four of your friends came, and the audience has six members in the crowd, and they're four of six. Yeah, that's not really doing stand up because it's like, this no. just feels like a stupid. You feel like an idiot. Yeah. Uh, oh, but like, okay, now now say there's a hundred people in the room, and four of your friends show up. That's the best feel, and you do well. You have yeah, to do well. That isn't often for me. I've only had a couple. I mean, I don't often perform for like crowds of a hundred. Well, okay, well, even forty. Yeah, thirty. I see what you're saying. Yeah, your point's well taken. Yeah. Well, thank I, didn't, you. I didn't mean to get uh, bogged <laughs> down in the numbers, uh, but yeah, that, that's a good feeling. But having your mom there, it's it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's a weird thing. You're like, I'm gonna say dick, balls, come, whatever, whatever it is you're gonna say that you know you like. It's like it's like openly if you're at 13 and you handed her your favorite album, right? You're know, like, listen to this. She's gonna be disappointed. I would have handed that. her like Eminem show yeah. or something. You know what I mean? She would have been highly disappointed with what I was listening to. Yeah. Now that I'm 30, she's just going to be highly disappointed in what I'm saying out loud. Thing. If your mom like chirps up a little during your set, you can't shut her down the way you want to. Well, no, then you got to tell her to stick a dick in her mouth. <laughs> Dude, uh, I when my mom did come to my show, every time I had a joke about her, I would, uh, I didn't mean to, but I'd, I would point in the direction of the audience that she was at. Like I'm like I'm not even supposed to have. Uh, at least I'm not, you know, or like at least I'm no, I'm not supposed to have kids. Like ask my mother, and I'd point at her without thinking about it. Like, fuck no, she, you should stick to dogs. Like, this is coming from a Christian lady who doesn't cuss, who also wants grandchildren. Yeah. Like, just, but the whole time I'm, like, pointing in her direction. And, like, I it, I didn't notice it until I went back to, like, watch my set to see, like, if there's anything I should change. Yeah. And that's the only thing I noticed is every time I brought up mommy, <laughs> I pointed at her. That's you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah. Not as a bit, though. You're no, just no. Like just almost reflexively. Yeah. Just, like, yeah. the same way, like, if I was, like, talking shit, like, on my buddy. And he was on that side of the room. I'd be like, fucking Mark. Like, you know what I mean? I would point to that side of the bar just automatically. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It was weird. It's just yeah. a weird, weird feeling. I've had my mom come to a few shows. She showed up with like nine to ten family members. That's so stress-inducing. Because <sighs> it's like, and now their perception of you doing stand-up rides on this. So, yeah. like, you don't, you've had shows you've killed. Yeah, and now then, and thankfully this, that was one of them. Yeah, but it doesn't. So that's good. But it, this is the one. It doesn't matter if you don't have a great set. They'll just be like, "What the hell are they doing?" Yeah, and they'll talk amongst themselves. Yeah, <laughs> and you have to kill your aunt um, again. <laughs> um, I'm running on the ants to kill. <laughs> you guys, got to stop showing up. Yeah, it's funny. All right, man. Well, we're a little over an hour. You want to call it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna play this this song by Ali Tomanique, man. You want to jam it with me? Yeah. You let's like do you it. like you like the hip hop? Uh, yeah. The hip hop. The hip hop. Said like Mitt Romney. Yeah, I love this. Uh, this dude is actually dope. He's gonna blow up. He won the one take contest last year. Uh, I'm What's sure he has one take. Um, it's a one. T- it's actually this video right here. It's a one take where uh, you have to film the whole video. In one in take. In one take, yeah. But you can edit the audio and stuff. Futuristic was the rapper who put it on, and he won the, the whole contest. Mm. This was one of the videos he puts on. He put out right after the one take, I believe. But what's dope is he does all of his own shit. Like, he's compl- just independent. Like, no no label yeah. or anything like that. So Which I think is a more uh, – feel free to play whenever. But I think that's a more 
in this day and age better route for an artist to take. Yeah. Because the mar- the pie is smaller, so you got to keep your slice of the pie as best as you can. And then you can still able and to produce videos because of that. You can be a little bit more easily your own marketing department. And you and you can be your artist. So there's no one telling you what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it, man. He's dope. Yikes. Available now on all streaming services. Download it. You guys make uh, sure to go uh, check him out. He got thanks. a plug in. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on the podcast, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Scott. It was Absolutely. a lot of fun. Good seeing you again. Guys. I don't got a lot of patience. Funny, because I got the remedy. Y'all are my enemies, so when they face this, they trying to get rid of me. They want the end of me. Woo! Goodness gracious, but they go pick up a blade. I'm feeling like Jason. I'm feeling like Raging. Already made up my mind. They can't tell me to change it. Uh, Live it like minute by minute, I pretty grind. Ooh. Soon as I spit a line, it is like genocide. Ooh. Hit them like, like a Mike Tyson, and then I bite. Trying to get the double XL, but I know I really fit a bigger size. Ooh. Look at my wrist, Ooh. look at the time. Oh, wait. It don't exist, nah, no. it's all in your mind I live in a moment, homie, that's how I'm rolling Notice, anything I wanna own it Life is looking like a game, I don't got no controller But I know that I control it, wait <clears throat> Yes, I been eating good, I got a lot on my plate uh, Facts, we cannot kick it, no, I never heard of a break Looking like Dash, mm. hella incredible Tell me, though, what is a break? Uh, wait, uh, I need more figures to count up the number of fakes uh, It is not adding up, soon as they notice a wait, they go saddle up I've been on Saturn, I'm up with the satellites None of you sit in my catalog, but you want wanna collaborate, whoa Hold up, wait, let me recalibrate Gotta make sure that I got it right uh, Atta boy, rappin' like that away, slap effect, rappin' like patty cake Woo! Automatic, anytime I double it up and I give it to him About to come and shoot, put him in a tune Gotta hit him with a boom, 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 boom Better give me room, boy, I gotta move. move Gotta get the whole squad ready for the revolution It's the evolution, really gotta put my head into it Anything I've been thinking about, I already headed to it You can tell I do it, I'm in, I gotta go hella stupid I don't got a lot of patience Funny, cause I got the remedy Y'all are my enemies, so when they face this They tryna get rid of me, they want the end of me Woo! Goodness gracious, but they gon' pick up a blade I'm feeling like Jason, I'm feeling like Raging Already made up my mind, they can't tell me to change it Guys, nice. Nah, I ain't finished with you lame mos with the same flow. Think I'm A-Rock when I swing though with the same squad on the same block like I'm J-Lo. Man, they can't stop me, never came close. But I thank God that I stay calm and I ain't show you that I'm napalm. It's not a flame though, I'm about to bang. Whoa. Whoa. like Nate Dog, I see the fake foes that regulate those, then they be case closed. End of discussion? Get them away, I gotta bust them. Mm. Feeling like Usher? Uh, hold up, I really got a confession. I already the man, I've been ahead of my time. They know when I got a plan. I go in the overdrive, I'm going in for the slam. I'm thinking of Kobe Mike, I'm doing it for the fam. I'm sticking up with an It's really what's on my mind. I innovate, levitate every day. Let them hate when they can't elevate. Made a wave, then I gain accolades. Gotta make sure they like break. I don't got a lot of patience. Funny, cause I got the remedy. Y'all are my enemies, taking my energy, killing me. Follow my steps like a Millipede, really. We squatted. 31 feeling like 23 ball. And talking to Braun, we going to stop it. Copy the style like a mini me. It's a pity, but I don't let it get to me. Ew. <clears throat> Raising a bar on my way up like a body bill. <clears throat> I got it all on my own, why would I need a deal? Gotta be real, uh, you don't keep up with a skill with it, you get a kill You too tired like bikes washed up, expired like milk uh, Listen, my energy infinite, in it, dimensional, buddy, your energy minimal I'm not in a physical, check it, I'm not even tangible That is why you get no visual, wow Hold on, wait, no, they can't see me, they Stevie, they wonder how I lead the weight uh, All right, speak a bang, keep it eight, hundred man, I gotta tell them all, I'll feel the same I don't got a lot of patience, Woo! funny, cause I got the remedy Y'all are my enemies, so when they face this, they trying to get rid of me, they want the end of me, Woo! Goodness gracious, but they go pick up a blade. I'm feeling like Jason. I'm feeling like Raging. Already made up my mind. They can't tell me to change it. Guys. Nice.